the diabetes code book review diabetes code is a book that was done by dr jason Fum. it was published in the year 2015. the diabetes code is the second book that he wrote after writing the first one which he named the obesity code in this book the author who is dr james uh, dr jason Fum is targeting people who have been diagnosed with diabetes, people who have pre-diabetes, someone who is living or someone who is taking care of a diabetic patient, and everyone else who is interested in gaining knowledge and information about diabetes. As Alia mentioned, it is the second book that he wrote after writing The Obesity Code, and he has also released another book recently that is called The Cancer Code. And his books are published by Radom Publishers. So who is Dr. Jason Fung? Dr. Jason Fung is a nephrologist practicing in Canada. He started writing about diabetes after a period of observing that his patients with renal failure or patients who had issues with their kidney started off with diabetes. It is then that he started doing research and he came to discover that much of the information that he had been given in his medical training had been passed by time. You know, medicine is a science, there is a mix of science and clinical practice. Dr. Jason Fu says that the longer that you tend to practice, the more that your clinical practice is based on old methods of doing things and really do most clinicians attempt to adopt new research or even to get to know for themselves what new research is saying about their various disciplines and the diabetes code is one of them where the doctor challenges the common way of treating diabetes or managing diabetes in most countries Diabetes is managed as a progressive disease. A disease that when you start taking pills the first day, you are likely to take those pills until the day that you're going to die. And they also say that diabetes is also a progressive disease, meaning that it gets worse as you age. It gets to damage more organs or to manifest or to have some, some complications, yeah? The, the, uh, as you advance in age. But this is the knowledge that Dr. Jason Fu is trying to challenge. I do read medical books every day because of the nature of my job and because of the nature of the interactions that I have on a day-to-day -day basis. And rarely do I review medical books, but I recently had an experience which challenged me to, to review this book because this book made the knowledge in the book might be of interest to the common man a friend of mine introduced me to another girlfriend of hers and within no time i think four or five months ago we started hanging out the three of us but there's something i noticed with the second time that you we were hanging out that this lady was going to the washroom so many times the first time i assumed that maybe she had taken a lot of coffee or caffeine or maybe an alcoholic beverage before I joined them and I, I didn't even think so much about it. It happened the second time when we were hanging out again. She was after every 30, 40 minutes, she's gone to the toilet and I was like, oh, something is off. So like one and a half months ago, I decided to, to ask her directly. And I was like, seems you take a lot of water, yeah? Because if you've just sat here less than one hour and you've gone twice, Seems you take a lot of water, there could be something. And she came out straight and told me that she's diabetic, which to me was shocking because she's quite young, she's less than 40. And I was like, how comes you're diabetic and you're less than 40? What type of diabetes? She told me it's type 2. So it's then that I decided to share the knowledge that I know about management of diabetes type 2. And I told her that you can put diabetes type 2 on remission depending on your doctor. It was a back and forth exchange here yeah, because she told me my doctor, who is a widely known endocrinologist in Nairobi, does not believe in such. She gave her metformin and uh, she's been adjusting her dose. 
based on how well she's able to manage her sugars and her lifestyle. But all she was told is that she could manage the condition with lifestyle modification, but she was not told that she can put diabetes on remission. This was new knowledge for her. Of course, I referred her to a doctor who could work with her through the journey. And I'm happy to report that last time when we were with her that her sugars have drastically reduced. She's been put on very low doses and the doctor who I requested her to see, who I'll tell you after this, has been able to put that diabetes under management and within one month, the girl would be out of medication. And so it is that experience, it was just last week on Friday which I got that information and that's when I decided to review this book just to see that someone else could be having diabetes when they are so young because for me having the type 2 diabetes when you are less than 40 is quite a very young age and you could be living with parents with diabetes, people you love could be suffering from diabetes and this knowledge could be helpful to someone out there. So what does Dr. Jason Fung say? Number one, Dr. Jason Fung in his book opens up by saying that diabetes is not a progressive lifelong disease. He says that diabetes is an endocrinology issue, diabetes is a sugar issue, and diabetes can be put on remission. Anyone who is diagnosed with diabetes can change their story at any time when they are ready to do a lifestyle modification. The second thing that uh, Dr. Jason Fung says when he opens that book is that diabetes is a sugar problem and he gives us a history of what happened for us to be where we are today with diabetes. He gives us, he takes us through a journey of when human beings relied on more on fats for their diet. And then came the American um, Heart Society and a message from the and a, and a message from the manufacturers that fat was bad for human life, and so individuals stopped relying more on fat for their diet, and all the fatty foods were demonized. Yeah, foods like eggs, avocados, nuts, any food that had fat was demonized. But in that book, he takes you through a journey and he gives evidence in his book of how the American Heart Society was under the influence of food manufacturers to demonize fat so that individuals can take up sugar and carbohydrates. He shows the adverts that were sponsored by manufacturers of food so that individuals could stop taking fat and of course when you demonize one type of food, Individuals are left with no options other than to look for the other solutions. Besides that, he continues to say that the food industry is to blame for the current of diabetes condition that we have in the countries in America and all over the world because these statistics are catching up in the whole world. So he shows us how my food manufacturers are responsible. And I can tell you at some point in my life I was involved in food manufacturing. I was in the value value chain, uh, uh, I was doing value addition. And I can tell you there is a lot that happens behind the curtains. A lot of food additives that are either sugar, white or MSG, and all these are additives that are not good for your body. So he takes us through that journey and then he gives us scenarios to show how, what happens to your body when you have type 2 diabetes. He takes us uh, through the process of Krebs cycle, uh, glycolysis, and what happens for fat breakdown in the body, conversion of sugar to fat and storage in the liver, a lot of scientific concepts and biochemistry principles which if you are into science will appreciate, if you are not into science you will not appreciate, but um, yes. Then he asks us, a person with type 2 diabetes, and their body is not sensitive to insulin, does not need more insulin. Insulin is required for type 1 diabetes. You do not need to give them medication or metformin which is to reduce the blood sugar levels. Uh, blood sugar levels. What you need is to withdraw the sugar from their diet. 
And so this is the first principle that uh, Dr. Fung is giving in his book. That first, if you are diabetic, you should not take carbohydrates. You should not be eating sugarly foods. You should not be adding sugar to your body. Because your body has a problem with insulin sensitivity. And when you withdraw sugar from the diet, you help your body to be sensitive to the insulin that is already produced. By avoiding starch, we mean no wheat on your diet, no white grains like rice, ugali, chapati. That you will stop taking bread, you will stop taking sweetened beverages, by that I mean soda and the juices that you find on the store. Those are foods that you will avoid. Because, as Dr. Fung puts it, he coins a new word which is calling diabetes, yes, diabetes and obesity. And he suggests that there is a very close relationship between the two. And it has been confirmed that in 70% of the cases, diabetes is a sugar problem. So if a patient has been diagnosed with diabetes, Dr. Fung is asking, why do we tell them to do lifestyle modification without telling them that they need to withdraw sugar from their diet completely? Why should we tell them that the patient should take sugar in moderation when they already have a sugar problem? He says that the only person who should be told to take sugar in moderation is someone who is healthy, someone who has got no complaints. But if someone has already been diagnosed with diabetes, that is a sugar problem, they should be withdrawn from sugar immediately. The second principle which um, Dr. Fung is sharing with the audience in regards to management of type 2 diabetes is fasting. In his wisdom, he says that a minimum fast of that six hours is required for someone who is diagnosed with diabetes. But the ideal is 72 hours. He says by fasting for that six hours, you help the beta cells of the pancreas to be able to produce more insulin if the ability to produce insulin has been impaired. You also help the body cells to be more sensitive to the insulin that is released so that you are able to convert the sugar to fat at a faster rate or at the normal rate that is supposed to be done. So he says that the solution to increasing the sensitivity of the uh, beta cells, the solution to increasing the sensitivity of the body cells to insulin is by fasting. He recommends that you start with that six hours fast, but the ideal for someone with diabetes is 72 hours. That six hours looks like taking your last meal on a Thursday in the morning. You fast throughout that whole day to the following day and you take another meal the following day in the evening. That is what that six hours fast looks like. And of course a 72 hours fast is double of that, 72 hours. And then the third thing which he recommends for people with diabetes is to avoid fructose in the diet. There are several sugars that you can take. We have glucose and we have fructose. When you combine fructose and, and glucose, you get sucrose. Fructose is a sugar that is found in fruits. However, he is saying that his advice is follows one another. Did I say follow one another? I said the advice is related on the basis of priority. Now the most important thing before you do anything else is to remove sugar from your diet. The second most important thing to do is to practice fasting, which is known as intermittent fasting, or a longer period of fasting if you can. And the third and the last is to avoid fructose. That means you should not start by avoiding fruits and sugary fruits when you are taking your high carbohydrate meals. You should start first by removing high carbohydrate meals from your diet 
Once you have successfully done that and you've gained the habit of avoiding high carbohydrate diet in your food, in your high, car high carbohydrate meals in your diet, then the second thing is that you start fasting to help your body become sensitive to insulin. Because what happens is that when you fast, you're not adding any calories to your body. You are burning whatever has been stored in your liver. What he says is most likely a fatty liver if you have diabetes. And by that act, your body gets to heal faster from the damage that had been caused over time. And then when you have done those two is when you go to the dad to reduce or to avoid fructose in your diet. He actually says that the fructose that you eat in the normal fruits is not so bad. But the fructose that you find added in foods that are processed may be what is causing harm. So he gives a list of all the foods that, have, that are processed in the factory and they have added fructose from the corn syrups to whatever is used in mixing cakes. He gives a whole list of all the food products that have fructose and he recommends that those ones would be the best ones to avoid first. But he says the fructose that is found in the normal fruits may not be so good however you discover that fruits have got many other added advantages that you can't totally do away with them and in a nutshell he says if you are diabetic and you manage to avoid all the carbohydrates and you manage to avoid to do fasting then most likely you'll be good even if you're still taking fruits so towards the end of the book he gives a comment about exercise and he says exercise is good, it's beneficial, especially for someone, uh, especially after a meal. It is very good you exercise immediately after you take a meal. But he says that you cannot manage diabetes with exercise alone. No one has ever lost fast by exercising alone. It starts with a diet and it also ends with a good diet. I think this is a very good book for you to read. If you know someone who is diabetic, if you know someone who is struggling to manage their sugar levels, that's a book you may want to read. You may also want to hear the critics of the book. Dr. Fung has attracted admiration and he has also been criticized in equal measure. We have doctors who argue that when a diabetic patient fasts and they say without sugar, their sugar levels drop so low that they can die anytime. Those are concerns that he has addressed in that book. There are doctors who argue that fasting is not healthy and no, no, no one should go for more than six hours without taking a meal. They provide their own scientific and clinical evidence and then Dr. Fung has responded with his own scientific and clinical evidence to that. And then there are also others who argue that Dr. Fung is a nephrologist. A nephrologist has specialized in kidneys. He is not an endocrinologist. He's not a diabetologist. So they argue that he should not be writing about diabetes issues. Uh, you will see all those feedbacks. I think it's a good book for you to read. If you think you know someone who's diabetic and they are in Kenya, there is one doctor that I mentioned to you at the beginning of the video who helps patients put diabetes type 2 on remission using lifestyle modification. So what that is does, when he withdraws you from starch and you can confirm actually that you are not taking carbohydrate foods, he lowers your dosage of metformin or other blood sugar controlling medications that you have when he puts you on a 72 days fast he adjusts the dose again so you will never find your, uh, a situation where your sugar levels are dropping so low and because he's a doctor and he's practiced in the uk and he has done this and i'm mentioning uk not because they are superior to our standards in any way but because the style of putting diabetes on remission started in the developed countries it is in Canada and UK where we first heard that type 2 diabetes patients are not taking medication for life. But they are being managed within one, two, and by the third month they are off the drugs. Yeah? So you can try. His name is Dr. Katambo. He has a clinic called Clinic Reversa. So you just do a Google search and check Clinic Reversa, Dr. Katambo. 
he will help you put diabetes type 2 on the remission but before we go there check this book by dr jason fu it will open your eyes to so many things that happen uh, in management of our patients it will show you a lot a lot of facts that you didn't know about diabetes type 2 about cancer which he talks in in a nutshell but he also tells us to buy his book that he was to release which he has already done the cancer code and then when you see if the truth in that book resonates with you or with someone that you love or you see it can help someone go share and tell people about it this book is a five star rating for me it's a five star rating i like it i read it every other time dr Fu opens really opens your mind is a doctor who who approaches medicine from a holistic perspective not just from western medical textbooks he uses his holistic approach to everything that he does yes and remember i am not giving this advice as a doctor this is a book the review if you've got to make any decisions concerning your body concerning your health it's always good to check with your medical doctor it's always good to consult the experts as you do whatever you are doing and also remember in this case this book is about type 2 diabetes it is not type 1 diabetes a type 1 diabetic patient may require insulin a type 2 diabetes patient according to this book will require lifestyle modification removing carbohydrates from the diet fasting regularly and avoiding fructose in the diet that is it for now and thanks for giving us your time